we're up to drawing 22. Part number 108, our headlight support bar. It's made of half inch or 12.7 mil steel tube, 1.2 mil wall, ERW electric resistance welded. It's 585 mil long. Each of the ends will be squashed and bent at 90 degrees. You'll notice here we've got the brackets for the headlights. We'll be getting to those later. I've cut it to 585 mil long. We now need to measure in 20 mil from each end. We'll then squash it in the vise and bend it to 90 degrees. Just a quick tip before you do the second fold. Two things. Number one, make sure it's square in the vise. Secondly, the tab that you're bending is going in the same direction, not the opposite direction. And it's also orientated squarely to each other, not twisted or misaligned. Push down the bottom, otherwise what will happen if you push up here, you'll get a bow through here. So make sure you're applying enough load down the bottom. And this should be horizontal. Also square to the vise. I've squashed and bent the ends over. We now need to work out the center and drill a five mil hole on each end, and we can then mount it to the guards. I've finished drilling the holes for the end of the bar. We now need to get on to make the mounting bracket for our vintage push bike headlight. We purchased this online. Yours may vary. The dimensions for the mounting bracket on drawing 22, ours are 30 millimeters long, but depending on your headlight and the mounting bracket itself, you could be longer or shorter. To make our headlight support brackets, we've got some 13 mil wide, three mil thick flat bar. We need two sections, 30 mil long. I don't cut all the way through either, um, just for safety. What I do is two thirds away and then snap it off. I've got my two 30 mil long pieces done. I now need to measure down nine millimeters, put a six and a half mil hole through the middle of the width of each piece. With our mounting tabs, we need to radius the top end and we also need to do a concave radius so it matches the tube diameter. To do the internal and external radiusing, you could use an air power tool, a little belt liner shot, or you could use your hand tools, engineer's files. I've measured in 90 millimeters from the end. We've used these welding magnets because this piece is quite difficult to hold on to. The orientation of the piece is also level with the ends as well. So when you hold it flat on the table, we can now weld around the base. I've finished welding the headlight support bracket to the headlight bar. I've also vice gripped the outer guard and inner guards back together on both sides. Remove the tech screw from hole one We've also got our mounting points here that we'll locate on hole one, joining these guards together. Then putting the tech screws back in place, we can remove the vice grips. We've already previously attached at the back of the guard to the running board, also to the cross member. We've now attached the front guard and the headlight bar together. The next thing we'll do is attached the inner guard to the cross member. We do that by clamping back to pull it up against the face of the cross member. Then we clamp down. I'm ready to drill the three mil hole and tech screw these two together. However, you need to make sure that the gap or the distance between the vertical face of the chassis rail and the inner guard is the same. It's approximately 10 millimeters on each side. Now we've got the inner guard secured to the cross member. What we've got to do is manipulate this guard so it's in a vertical position. You can see here, it's not quite correct, whereas the back guard is correct. Previously, we hadn't finished folding the safety edge or 
securing, welding, etc., the inner guard to the guard, right? That will allow us a little bit of flexibility. So what you'll have to do, support the nose of the guard, and then with your right hand, pull this out. So you're rotating the guard clockwise, relieving it in this area. Using a square of reference of front here, you can see the top section of the guard is out of square, whereas the back, it's square. So therefore, we have a reference point that you can work the guard out to. This process will require three points of contact. One at the nose, where you're pushing against, you're resisting a twisting force. Two, through the middle section of the guard. Three, where your hip is holding on the guard where it joins the running board. Obviously, you're gonna need this at a good working height too. We're almost there. The trick with this process is not to push in with the nose, but to actually pull out with the top of the arch. Again, supporting with your hip. Make sure that we've got that correct orientation all the way through the car. The top of the guard will nearly be horizontal. I've got the left hand guard pretty good now, so we need to do the right hand guard. Same process again, supporting the nose, pulling the center of the guard out and holding with your hip the back of the guard. We're up to finishing the safety fold edge. We're keeping it in place on the car to keep it nice and stiff and in shape. So what we'll do is using hand tools, we'll roll it over. A reverse curve hammer and an angle dolly. First of all, using an angle dolly, the face upwards, the narrow face, supporting on the inside of the guard, we can then hammer on this face. Ideally what you want to do is roll it around, right? Don't squash it, just try and roll it around. Holding the dolly against the inside face gives support, so when you're folding it, it won't collapse or roll down on itself. Hammering on the inside face of the flange. Don't touch the rolled edge at all. All you're doing is the outside flange to get it to collapse on itself. You can really start to see here how the edge is collapsing, right? So I'm always hitting on the outside face. Don't touch the inside face at all if you can avoid it. You can see I'm progressively working up and down, just continually closing it over. So what we're trying to do is progressively throughout working our way backwards and forwards and eventually we're gonna finish it off. We have to completely finish it when we remove the headlight support bar and also lifting it off because we've got more work to do later on to attach the outer and the inner. When we take the guard off next time, I can finish closing this off completely when it's on the workbench. The idea with this process is not to completely close it off or squash it. What you're doing is just simply rolling it around. You're keeping that section. It's almost like a false wire edge. Normally what we do is we put wire in here, right, which really strengthens or reinforces a wire edge. However, this is regarded as a false wire edge. So don't squash it over completely. I've gone as far as I can as far as hammering the edge over because our headlight support bar, the chassis, the wheels are getting in the way. So what we need to do now is disassemble from the car our two guards. We can then finish the process of closing over that false wired edge. Then we can also attach permanently the inner and outer guards together.
Now I've got the guards off the car, I've got full access. I've put the tech screws back into hole number one so we can finish rolling our safety fold over. We'll do that using some shot bags. Because it's a three-dimensional shape, the only flat piece is right here, but it won't be sitting at an angle that's comfortable. So therefore, with the shot bags, I've got a good access point here. We'll use our hand tools to finish closing this off and we'll have a nice safety edge. So you can see here that I've closed this over. Now, I did not touch this front folded face at all. What I did is actually clench the back edge. It's not completely flat, however, when you go to paint, you can put a little bit of seam sealer along this edge here, and that'll close off really nicely. You can even do a little weld on each end, that way there'll be no water and you won't get any rust in there. Prior to setting up and drilling for our plug welding, we've got a slight gap between the inner guard and the outer guard. So what we need to do is close it up nice and tight, just using hand tools, a little bit of hammer and dolly work to close that up. You can see here, this is nice and tight. That's what we want all the way across because when we go to plug weld, the pieces won't separate under heat. It'll be very quick and simple to plug weld. This is the gap that we have to close up. Over here is perfect. To get in there, so that we can actually plenish that flange down and close the gap up. It's a little bit tricky. So, engineer's hammer, you can see here we don't have a lot of access. If you flip it over, we can get the back side and work that flange. However, it can get messy, it'll leave edge marks, etc. This is a door skinning hammer. It's actually made for offset access. You can see here, it's gonna get right into the edge there. We'll support it with a dolly and work our way around and that'll close the flange up really well. We'll be welding our guards together. However, the alternate methods that you could use are pop rivets, fasteners. So the process for plug welding is we drill through with a three mil drill bit for our previous marked holes. We then separate the inner guard and the guard, go through the guard with a five mil hole, creating a diameter discrepancy between the top and the bottom piece. We'll also be applying some weld through primer on the surfaces that will be enclosed together. We'll join it back together and then we'll weld through the large diameter hole. Now these are separated with a five mil drill bit. I'm gonna go through and open all these holes up to five mil on both guards. Before we weld all these pieces together, we're gonna to apply some weld through primer. To do that, we'll need to sand this face, sand the under face, mask this up, apply two coats of weld through primer, then we can weld them together. The idea or concept of weld through primer is any mated surfaces that can't be accessed later that are welded, you're applying an anti-corrosion preventative so that when it's painted, it won't rust between those surfaces that you can't access during the paint process. The weld through primer is dry. I've put the inner and outer guard back together using tech screws. We've gone into holes one, four and seven. However, if there's any gap between the faces, just use some additional tech screws or long vice grips. So the holes without any tech screws are the first ones that I'll be plug welding. Then on the inside, we'll be tacking these two together at the front and also the rear. Once that's done, we remove the tech screws plug welding holes four and seven, but not hole one because that's for our headlight support bar. The actual process of MIG plug welding, you've got to turn your machine setting up about two, maybe two and a half volts higher than what you normally would when you're butt welding two pieces together. The process is the torch angle is 90 degrees, still with an eight millimeter stick out on your wire. Then when you're actually filling the hole up, the best thing to do is 
put the wire at the top of the hole, 12 o'clock position, and then go around and finish at the 12 o'clock position. I've done some test welds on this machine, so we're ready to go. Yours may vary, so please do a test. Now, we've done a lot of work to get to this stage, so please take your time and don't rush. I've finished plug welding the guards. Now what I'm gonna do is clamp it to the welding table and sand the outside face to get that nice and smooth. Then the inside, we'll set it up on the vise and we'll just do a very light sand on the inside. When sanding your plug welds, don't be too aggressive with them because you can undo some of that good work. For example, your plug weld should be slightly proud, one or two millimeters. What you're doing with the sander is simply leveling the surface off. Try not to dig into any of the parent metal whatsoever. So it really is a process of initially just cutting the head of it off and then blending it. So don't be too aggressive with your sanding, otherwise you can damage the piece. Look, if you have a look here, you can actually see, so unsanded, sanding the top, finished. So first step, middle step, finished. That's our front guards done. We can now put them back on the chassis. We can also bolt up our headlight support bar and move on to the next stage. Just reassembling the front. Remember we drilled our hole here out to 5mm so we'll be using our nuts and bolts M4 and we'll bolt these together. Now this is all bolted back together, we've got to check and make sure we've got the correct steering clearance on both sides. If you need to, manipulate both sides together, then we can move on to the next stage. 